If you are listening to this podcast, it means you are searching. Searching for someone who understands you. Someone who gets you. You are yearning to be understood and to belong. Welcome to the Someone Gets Me podcast, where we help smart, talented, and sensitive people navigate an often insensitive world. Let's welcome your host, ambassador, author, speaker, and mentor, Diane Allen. Diane has the experience and knowledge to educate and inspire as she has been there and understands your unique intensities and their challenges. Hey everybody, it's Diane and I have an amazing guest for us today and she's going to talk to us about all kinds of things that you A-type perfectionist people, you know who you are. You guys are going to love to hear her. Her name is Devora, and she is so cool. I love her energy. And this amazing, talented woman is taking time out of her day, and she lives in Israel, and I'm in the United States. So through the miracle of technology, we get to know each other and connect, and you get to hear her in person with her wisdom. Devora has over 25 years of inspiring and helping women with their energy their spiritual connection, and understanding who they are as their authentic selves. She's a yoga teacher. She's a singer and songwriter, a vocal coach, and a writer. She's so talented on all these amazing, amazing energy ways. She is inspired mostly today because on her own healing journey, she has healed herself from chronic illness. And now she's sharing her wisdom, her talent, and her amazing self through her business. She's a transformation coach, and she's been helping people for years now. Her specialty, all of us, the A-type people who are perfectionistic and can run ourselves into the, into the ground like a machine and then burn out and then start all over. I'll bet Devorah's going to have some great tips for us today. She's a wife with three wonderful teenagers and a six-year-old and a big family, and she runs a successful business. So she knows how to balance things really, really well. Devorah is an amazing listener, and she's connected in an intuitive way. And that intuition is an amazing power. So I would like all of you to welcome with me to our show today, Devorah Gila Berkowitz. Welcome, Devorah. Hi, Diane. Thanks for having me. It's so exciting to have you here because the things that you do and the way you help people so aligns with the things I talk about and what I really believe in that I'm just so excited to get to interview you. It's going to be so fun. So first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. That is a very large question. I'm going to feel, and I'm feeling very small right now. I'm feeling very humbled being your guest on this show. You've had such amazing people here uh, sharing their wisdom. I guess what I'd like to say is um, I've been through uh, my own healing journey that um, helped me connect so deeply to my connection to the divine uh, that's within and without. And there's nothing more that I love uh, to do than help other people connect to their divine selves for their transformation. So I'm deeply in gratitude for, you know, being on this healing journey. And like you mentioned, I am a busy mom of four kids. Um, I live in Israel and uh, balancing different aspects of my life. If you have any more specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm just feeling very, very uh, joyful about being with you right now in your audience. Oh, awesome. I do. I would like to know what it says here. You're a singer, a songwriter, and a vocal coach. I get the whole yoga and the intuitive and the healing and the divine. Help, it, help me understand, help all of us understand a little bit about the singing, songwriting, vocal coach part. That just sounds very intriguing and fun. Yeah, actually, that was uh, from uh, years ago. I'm um, not currently doing that. Growing up, I was always very connected to, um, to music and to the, the muse that inspired me to write songs. And when I decided to come to Israel, you know, I heard the divine voice telling me um, that I would meet my soulmate in Israel. And so when I was here, um, I, was, I brought a guitar that I wasn't so good at, and I brought my songs that I had written, and somebody had heard me and said, wow, do you have a tape? 
you know, back then we didn't really have a CD. I'm kind of dating myself. And, um, and I didn't. And because I, I have such a deep need to serve um, with my gifts, uh, I decided to record an album. Um, and if someone had not said that to me, I probably would never have done it. Um, and so I did. And it quickly became a kind of one hit wonder among the, the Jewish religious women in Israel. And I became a kind of uh, pioneer in, in that music uh, uh, genre. And actually it has grown farther and I have not continued doing that, but I feel really uh, excited that I could be part of, um, of that process of Jewish religious women's music um, in Israel. And then what ended up happening was, um, you know, fast forward being a busy mom of all these kids and trying to be the best, the best mom, the best housekeeper, the best, you know, Jew, <laughs> the best everything type A personality. Harvard graduate, you know, changing her life and trying to be the best, you know, spiritual person living in Israel. So, um, and I was in a, a two women show um, performing my original music and slowly but surely I ended up getting um, physical symptoms and I ended up in hospital, I ended up in the hospital with uh, actually going blind in my left eye with a um, neurological autoimmune condition. And, um, you know, that, that's a story in itself we can get into, but to finish answering your question about the vocal coaching, I stopped at that time singing and performing because I had this huge healing journey to go through. And yet I coached women in their singing because, again, this deep sense of service, I wanted to help them find their voice and their expression. And I developed a holistic singing method that's based on spirituality and so these women ended up um, improving their voices on the outside and also improving their voices on the inside. So one of them found her soulmate and got married. Another woman improved her marriage um, and got pregnant after years of trying. And uh, that's when I realized this gift that I have for transformation, transformational coaching and healing. So I ditched the vocal technique part and I just delved deeper and deeper in the coaching and continued with my healing process. So, so that's how the singer, songwriter, and vocal coach kind of fit into my story. Oh, that is amazing. That, that right there is like awe-inspiring. You know, not everybody follows that divine calling and that divine go for it, right? Moving to Israel, <laughs> you know, singing your song, recording the album. I'll bet you when you recorded the album, you didn't know where it was going to go. You just yeah, did it. I'm imagining a lot of uh, people in your audience are very uh, tuned into that inner voice, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering how many people uh, listening might get stuck in wondering, um, you know, is this inner voice the truth? Is it something that I'm supposed to do, and how can I do it? Um, you know, that kind of thing. Yes, overthinking does get in the way of, of a lot of people, and one of my questions for you that you just perfectly set up for me, thank you, <laughs> is all about overthinking and kind of our brain getting in the way of our intuition and our guidance or something we know we're supposed to do, like thinking kind of beyond the open window part and creating an obstacle or, or missing it all together. And I'm sure you help a lot of people and you've probably worked with yourself on how not to have your brain get in the way. So do you have any tips or any suggestions or maybe something that you could share with all of us that would help all of us a little bit more get unhooked from overthinking. Oh my gosh, yes. And I'm going to use a tip that you gave me right before we started recording, which was to breathe. <laughs> right? So that breath is so crucial, that for, especially for overthinkers. That breath is so crucial because it is the divine breath. It is divine life force energy that when you let it, you allow it to come in, and all of a sudden you stop uh, the doing aspect and you begin more in your being aspect. And you know, we're human beings, not human doings. And the act of breathing, you know, it does take effort, but if you think about it, where does the breath come from? It comes from somewhere outside of ourselves. And so we just need to put a little bit of effort, let's call it like an intention, and allow that breath in. And that's the divine you know, who created your structure, your anatomy, the whole oxygen thing. That's the divine, you know, 
being a creator and allowing you to be the creation. So that's the first step is to breathe. And then again, being in your beingness and allowing and knowing that you are supported and cared for. Um, I want to really drive home the point that the divine is just cheering you on and you don't have to prove anything. You can just show up as who you are um, in this moment, wherever you are, because the, the divine is like so patient and divine, whether you call that God or source or universal life force energy or whatever, that, that higher power really just wants to create a relationship with us and um, be expressed by us in the world. So whatever you feel your purpose is, your mission is, you know, there's no rush. You know, you're here. Every moment is, um, you know, the right, the right time to take the next step and we can just slow down. And that all starts with the breath. So I really encourage you to take that breath, take a moment, tune in, go inside and, and, you know, check in and see what is, what is my inner voice saying? And, and just be with that. There's no rush. Oh, that's beautiful. There's no rush. We're always right on time, even when we don't realize we're right on time. And so perfectionism, and I'm listening to you and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And then I have this one client of mine who likes to be perfectionistic and he thinks he has to do like everything perfectly right out of the box. And so when I say breathe and go within, they're like, but I don't know how to do that or whatever. And so when you have somebody who's that perfectionist type A, have to do it right the first time out, what kinds of things would you say to that person to help them understand a different way to see this process? So that's a great question. And with coaching, we always want to ask one of two questions. It's usually a what question and a how question. Because with anyone, whether they're, you know, their gremlins show up as perfectionism or low self-worth or, you know, overdrive or whatever it is, it's always about getting them to check in and, and find that answer for themselves. So let's take um, the client you were speaking about. Um, I might ask them, you know, how can you reframe what it is you're thinking about in a way that brings you more ease or well-being, right? And so that question immediately helps them get into a different state of mind. And without realizing how they did it, they've let go of that sense of perfection because they're focusing on a a solution-based question, how, you know, and they start to design their own, their own path, their own next step, or a what question, you know, what if, what if, you know, it didn't really matter, you know, whatever it was that they were worried about, and they might get insulted, you know, because we're so stuck on our limited beliefs, but yeah, asking a what or a how question, get them to, to go deep inside. That is, a, that is genius advice, everybody. So if you didn't get it the first time, re-record, <laughs> rewind this, and listen to what Devorah just said, a what question or a how question. She gave examples so you can use them because she knows, as I know, that why questions keep us stuck. So it's the what and the how questions that help us change it up. So now you can listen to her over and over to remind you every day. <laughs> the right questions to ask is true. Sometimes we need more than one reminder. So that's a perfect thing about this podcast. You can keep listening to her wisdom over and over until it really resonates or until you get that breakthrough you're looking for. You know, Diane, I'd love to add another like a bonus question. And that is uh, whenever we're stuck, the key to getting out of it is really to open up into curiosity. Uh, again, it's part of the being and not doing, right? And when we step a little bit away and allow the divine to like figure it out for us and we're just curious then we allow the divine to co-create with us the solution so my favorite favorite question really is an i wonder question so um let's take the topic of of like opportunities you know we all want to receive you know whether it is money or good health or our relationship or our next client or whatever you know, I wonder, I wonder who my next client will be, or I wonder how the divine is going to help me manifest this in my life. And can you feel how <clears throat> by asking an I wonder question, it really takes the pressure off of you. So you want to ask an I wonder question and don't be afraid to invite the divine into helping you 
you know, live your life and, and help you find solutions. Because like I said before, the divine just wants to be in relationship with you and manifest itself from within you and in your, your unique uh, person that you are. Oh, I love that. I'm glad you added that. I wonder question. That's beautiful. I love curiosity. And I always tell everybody, you know, be like Sherlock Holmes or, you know, those investigators ask questions and be curious. And I love the, I wonder question. Thanks for adding that. That's cool. Was there ever in a time in your life where you look around and the people around you didn't really get you and you kind of wondered like you being intuitive and sensitive and um, really connected in a lot of ways, you look around and go, "Um, they're not getting it or maybe you feel a little alone or something like that. Is there any time like that that you'd be willing to share about and, and what you did to feel more connected and and how you manage not being understood by other people. Wow, that is a big can of worms, to be honest with you, because my initial response was like, well, my whole life, you know, every (laughs) day. But that's not even true because, you know, thank goodness I have found uh, throughout my life pockets of like-minded people. And when you do find that, it's such a relief, as you know, you find people who think like you or, you know, like to do the same things uh, you do. And, and that's wonderful. The truth is, you know, we're all on this planet together and we're really here to, to be with all kinds of people. And so we often find ourselves not with, uh, you know, our soul sisters and brothers. And so, uh, yeah, for a lot of my life, I felt like people didn't get me. Um, the most, you know, recent, times, uh, I'm going to go back to the divine. I'm <laughs> going to really invite people to, to really open up to this idea that you really are never alone and you are you know, deeply understood by the creator that created you. And uh, you know, I could just go back to this theme again and again, no matter what. And so sometimes you, know, you might be having that struggle, that moment where you just don't feel like someone's getting you. And I just want to encourage you to take that moment and tune into your divine connection, whatever that means for you. Um, And however you get there, you know, for some people it's uh, meditation. For some people it's prayer. For others, it's taking a walk in nature. Um, For me, it's just a moment of consciousness where I'm hooking up. You are gotten by the divine because the divine created you and put you here on purpose with all of you, with all of the different aspects that you're, you're made of, um, your biology, your genetics, your energy fields, your intelligence, you know, your, your challenges, your particular strengths and gifts. So um, again, leaning into the divine, however that connection shows up for you. And you know what, if you don't have a developed divine connection or a spiritual practice, um, then, you know, most of you are, uh, do. And, uh, or if you feel far from that, uh, just keep working at that. Keep uh, finding ways to develop that because I really truly believe that that is the key to feeling like you do belong. So above it all, even with the human ignorance around us and the people and our, all of us in our autobiographies, we may not get it humanly, but yet divinely and energetically, since we're all one, when we tap into that, suddenly there's that breakthrough, right? Yeah, and Diane, it's also, you know, all of us are, um, what's the word? We're representatives of the divine, especially if you're hooked up spiritually. And got to always ask yourself, you know, why am I here in this moment um, with this person that I'm not, you know, vibrating at the same energy level with? You know, what is the lesson here for them? uh, Sorry, for me and also for them. Am I here to learn something? Am I here to learn tolerance and patience for someone else? Am I here to share some wisdom with someone else? You know, we're these uh, emissaries uh, in the world. And so, um, yeah, when you see yourself showing up with other, other kinds of people and you feel like you're not being understood, you know, what's, what's really going on in like the divine eye and the divine plan? You know, why are you here in that moment and what can you do Um, I should use a what and a how question, you know, what can you do in this moment to, you know, fulfill more of your purpose and who you are? Um, And how can you make this moment more joyful for yourself? Oh, great. Those are great suggestions. Thank you so much. I love listening to the way you process and think things and how understandable everything you're saying is to all of us, you know, all of the listeners. It's, it's amazing. It's so refreshing to speak with you. 
today. <laughs> so your business is being a transformational coach and healer. And I will bet you have a process that underlies it, like a, a paradigm, if you will, strategy that you use as your basis to help people transform and really connect in the way that you're speaking. So would you be willing to share some of the, the basis of your theology, if you will, your paradigm, your understanding of your business and how you help people? What do you know, how does it work? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure this is going to sound familiar to, uh, to others out there. Um, a lot of us work with the same kinds of tools, consciousness tools. Um, first of all, the, the people that um, um, most benefit from uh, the services that I'm delivering uh, currently are you know, women who are pulled in different directions by work and family, and they're stressed, they have no time for themselves. Um, and in the back of their minds, they're wondering if they're just going to crash and burn out. And so I help them to, you know, get out of that place of stress, to avoid burnout, and to make that time for themselves and to have more energy so they can be happier and healthier and uh, just enjoy higher levels of well-being. And so, you know, in that light, um, I use a, a, a process and I'm going to tell you the steps. And the truth is these steps really work on any kind of challenge you know that you might have they're very universal so the first thing is start where you are and have self-awareness it's all about awareness you know you can't transform your life until you know where you are right now uh in the present you know what are my challenges what are my limitations what am i thinking about all the time what are the thoughts that are driving my choices and my behaviors so becoming aware of where you are. Now, we do have to backtrack and just talk a little bit about how we do get our thoughts or our limiting beliefs. Um, and basically, when we are small, before the age of seven or so, and we're in the care of our primary caretakers, um, we actually are so wired to um, have um, and want and desire love, safety, and belonging for ourselves that we'll do anything to get that. And so we adopt the beliefs and the attitudes and the values of the people around us, you know, our caregivers. And we take on their, their stuff, basically, and we turn that into our truth. And we live from that place of truth. And we just repeat what's familiar to us. So in order to get love, safety, and belonging, we'll adopt limiting beliefs like, I'm not enough, or I'm not worthy or deserving, or I'm not important, or I can't do this, or whatever beliefs our um, caretakers have. And in fact, I just gave you the four major categories of limited beliefs um, that we have that really any belief can fall into. So again, they're I, I am not, um, not enough, not worthy or deserving, not important, and um, unable, or I can't. Right, so we have these um, limited beliefs and they drive our behavior. And so um, we'll act in ways just to um, kind of fortify or prove to ourselves that these beliefs are true. And we end up staying stuck because the, the action that we take, uh, and I'll give an example soon because I know this is very theoretical, the actions that we take just reinforce our limiting beliefs and it goes into a cycle. So um, is it okay if I give you an example now of, uh, of these limiting beliefs and how they work? Sure. Okay, great. So let's say that you learned from your environment, you've got, you know, a, a parent that works really hard because that's how you, you can get any, you know, you can't get anything unless you work really, really hard. And so um, you learned this. And so now you have this limiting belief because all you want is to be loved and belong in that family that you can't get anything until, unless you work really hard for it and you're blowing yourself out. And so, um, you know, you end up um, being exhausted and, um, you know, stressed out and burnt out. And maybe you didn't get the results that you wanted or because you still, you believe, you know, it's not enough. It really never is going to be enough. And so you work even harder and harder. And so you stay stuck in that cycle. So here in this first step, just to summarize, you know, as long as you know what your limiting beliefs are and can identify them 
that is the, the first step in, in getting out of being stuck in those beliefs. So I know that was a kind of long-winded uh, answer to what that first step was. Are you ready for the second step? Yes, I'm ready for it. I think it was a it was a comprehensive answer that really helps people see that the limiting beliefs aren't just a thought we have here and there, that they're much deeper and there's 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 a lot more to to flesh out and work on when you start looking at your belief system. So I thought it was a great explanation. What's step two? Okay, great. So step number two is the way you let go or start to let go of these beliefs. So um, when we go on any path of transformation, there's always a bit of resistance because, you know, you want to change, except your limiting beliefs are like stuck there resisting the change because they have, you know, maybe they're a, a two or three or four or five or more decades old. And so the act of um, embracing that resistance, the act of being present with where you are, even if you feel stuck, the act of acceptance, right? So this step is, is called acceptance. What I love to do is invite people to have compassion for themselves, to invite unconditional love. Um, and if it's hard for them to do it for themselves, then to imagine that the divine is embracing them with unconditional love or sending them unconditional love. You could imagine the embrace of a loved one. Any way that you can just be in the present moment, acknowledge, and be an acceptance, not, not uh, resignation, but acceptance being present um, in, in recognizing what is, what is happening, where is your reality right now. And that's a step that, that I usually do with my clients. Um, as soon as I see that limiting belief and the emotion that accompanies it when, it, when it starts to bubble up, we go into like a 20 minute uh, meditative process which is so transformational and opens up to different dimensions of, of the person's uh, existence and reality and really allows them to make the, the transformation that's coming. So that's the second step, acceptance. Oh, um, I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's so deep. It's so deep inviting the divine to just co-create your transformative process with you because that's, it's so miraculous. And again, you don't have to do it alone. It's not all on your shoulders. There's more help. And you don't, you know, sometimes that feeling alone when people aren't getting you or you're trying to make it or you're like that machine, you forget that there's all of this abundant assistance. And so I love that step. What would be the next step? Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, you just said all this abundance. It is so true. We are not always aware of how much abundance is out there and we feel like we're alone. I'm so glad you just uh, shared that. Um, so the third step is actually a step um, about creating. It's right called create and it's about creating a new mindset. And a lot of people make the mistake of just making affirmations and saying new you know, mindset mantras without going through the first two steps. And the problem with that is that they haven't yet come to um, that place of kind of self-forgiveness and letting go and allowing. Uh, so you really need to do the first steps first, the uh, one and two. So in this step, you're creating a new mindset. Now, for those of you who have already um, practiced affirmations, this might sound familiar. There are basically three general rules that uh, we like to use when we're creating a mindset. So the first rule is to talk about yourself. You know, if you want, I'm going to go back to the getting new clients thing. If you want new clients, you don't want to create a mindset, which is new clients are coming because it leaves you out of the picture or, you know, my clients um, have uh, lots of money to pay for their transformation. I don't know off the top of my head. You don't want to leave yourself out of your mindset. So always include I, right? So I am losing weight naturally. I am abundant. Um, I am filled with love and acceptance. Or use the word me. So uh, the divine is helping me become more aligned, for example. Okay. Then the second rule, it has to do with being in the present moment. So we never want to make a mindset in the future because it's always pushing it you know, and it, it'll, it won't happen because you're thinking in terms of, you know, what's going to happen. So for example, I have lots of fun or I enjoy my marriage or whatever it is. Um, so that's in the present tense. And then the third one, it, it's got to be um, positive, 
right? So instead of, I'm not in debt anymore, <laughs> you want to say, you know, I'm abundant, I call abundance towards me, right? So again, it's in the first person, it's about me or I, it's present tense, and it's positive. So that's the third step, creating the mindset. Oh, I love those steps. And I love how you broke those down. So you can actually look at what you're saying to yourself and see if it meets those criteria to see if it's really something that's going to transform you and move you forward, or you're just rearranging old things and that's not going to move you. So that's perfect. So I know there's four steps. So what's step four? Ah, okay. Let's just check in with step number three and make sure that that mindset is right for you because some people create mindsets that really don't resonate with them and then they don't work. They don't help pull you into that new reality. So what you want to do just real quick is to say your mindset to you three times and check in with your gut. And I'm sure your listeners will be able to tell very quickly if it resonates with them on that energetic level. And if it resonates, that's great. Keep it. And if it doesn't, that you might want to try some tweaking, maybe change a word here and there. I find that if they're um, if they're long, sometimes it's hard to get them to resonate. So just make them as succinct as you can as possible. And if you have to cut out some words, you can include those other words that you wanted just in the energy and in the intention of your mindset. So try to keep it as short and uh, concise as possible while it resonates with you. Okay, <laughs> so far so good? Yes, perfect. Okay, great. So number four is action, right? There's no transformation without action, Diane, right? We all, we all know this, but you know, thankfully um, you have the previous three steps to set you up. So in this step, you're creating very simple action plan. It could be one step, you know, and that step can be just asking for help. Because if we make things too complicated, then we get back into that overthinking mind. We get back into procrastination, perfectionism. We don't want to be stuck there. So just take one action step, something that's doable, something that makes sense to you. And I know a lot of coaches that make the mistake of giving their clients the next action step. You know, in a rare occasion, that would be necessary. But most of the time, the client really needs to choose their action step themselves because then they're going to do it, right? So um, yeah, those are the four steps to, uh, to transformation. That's awesome. I tell everyone action's my favorite word. And, and every time I talk about action, I get this look, this glazed over look from so many people, especially if I'm talking in front of an audience, because I think everybody wants the transformation and people want to take action only if it's comfortable and pleasing and easy and and so I, I like to talk about the difference between ease and easy, you know, and what you describe here for me as I'm listening to you and I'm imagining my own process, I feel an ease about it. Like there's a flow and an ease and it kind of goes. It doesn't necessarily mean it's easy because <laughs> wow. there are bumps in the road, right? Not only are there bumps in the road, but there is a kind of fifth bonus step in here. Um, and that, and that is, um, accountability because you can't really have a transformation unless you're accountable. And for some people, it means having a coach, um, just makes the work go more quickly and more, um, more easily in the sense that you have someone guiding you. Um, a lot of people like to use a friend and, you know, sometimes that works, a lot of times I find that the friend doesn't give them accountability because, you know, your friend wants you to be able to get off the hook and save face and doesn't want to ruin your friendship. <laughs> so you need to have a way to be accountable to, to, taking, um, to taking action, you know, when you want to transform your life. It is so easy to, get, you know, get up in the morning and, you know, have this vision for yourself, but then not do anything. So for me personally, I like to have a coach and a mastermind group. And so that's what pulls me forward when I'm, uh, you know, on my transformative journey, which is basically all the time. Right. I'm, all, I'm always transforming. I tell everybody at this point, probably only my fingerprints are the same as when I was born. And I'm not sure about that sometimes, you know, it's like always moving. And I like individual and group support as well. I support that, that I think when we have our tribe around us, our people around us, that there's that collective that gives us even more inspiration. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, and it's so easy these days with the internet. You know, um, there's so many ways to find like-minded people to work together with. Yes. Um, 
when it comes to those, those groups. That's awesome. I am assuming, and I just want to have you confirm for us that if somebody is listening to you and resonating with you and would like to talk to you about working with you, then I'm going to put your website and your Facebook information in the show notes so they can click on there and get right to you. But I'm assuming that you work with people all over the world. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's, I think, one reason why the divine created the internet so that we can help each other and, you know, access resources from wherever they are. So, yeah, and uh, even though, you know, I specialize in working with women, um, if someone is resonating with me um, and didn't answer to all of the things I spoke about um, as far as the clients that I, you know, that I specialize in, that's totally fine. If you resonate and you want to have a conversation with me, I'd be very happy to meet you. That's wonderful. So we're getting near the end of the interview and I ask the same question to everybody and that is, after hearing the conversation and listening to all the wisdom you've shared, which has been so generous, thank you so much. Is there anything that you would like to share that I didn't ask about or something coming through intuitively that you believe all of us out here would love to hear? What's coming up for me right now is paying attention. Um, and what I mean by paying attention is sometimes we get so stuck in our, in our own experience and in our own minds that, um, you know, pay attention to what's happening around you. Like just outside my office here in the window is um, a, a, a mama bird and a papa bird, and they chirp all day long. And um, what they're chirping about is they've got a nest of baby birds uh, that have hatched and are just about ready to leave that nest. And every day I'm paying attention to see, you know, when are the baby birds going to take flight? You know, it's going to be such a miraculous kind of moment. And there's so much that we can learn and um, feel like we're part of the bigger picture, um, connected to such a bigger world, just by paying attention to what's happening around us. So just to encourage everyone um, to, if you feel like you're getting stuck in your experience and you're overthinking and you're in your own head, um, to step out and just pay attention into the world, what's happening around you and see how you fit into that. Oh, that's beautiful. I love to do that. And I got the picture of the little birds. I love it. <laughs> so Devorah, thank you so much for spending time speaking to all of us today and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your energy. And we're really grateful. So thank you. Thank you, Diane. I really enjoyed talking to you and listening to you as well and connecting to your listeners. Thank you. So everybody remember to keep your face to the sun so the shadows fall behind you and you are a rock star. So go out there and rock your life because you're here on purpose with a purpose. Until next time, see you later. Are you tired of searching for someone who understands you? Join our Facebook group, Someone Gets Me. In this group, you will be able to connect with others who are intense, sensitive, smart, talented, and wanting to be understood. Diane shares her insights and teachings, and you can connect with others. Join today.